Hello and welcome to this sort of recap of the UK Games Expo that I attended last weekend. I'm very nearly recovered from it because it was pretty hectic. And as some of you may know, I was doing a live show of The Bad Spot there, more on that later. But I just kind of wanted to talk about my experiences and kind of what I got up to while I was there. Now, it's been a while since I've last attended the UK Games Expo. Obviously, it was cancelled um, for a couple of years for unspecified global reasons. And... Every time I'd been before, I'd only ever been for the day. I'd kind of come on the Saturday, uh, met some friends, played some games, and kind of just tootled off after having a brief look around. But this year, I was there for three full days to soak in the full expo experience. And my first impressions were that it was a lot busier than it has ever previously been. I think the last year I went, I believe they said there was maybe 25 or 30,000 people there over all three days when this year it was just over 50,000 and it felt busy. It felt a lot more difficult to get onto demo tables. It felt like the queues for things were longer and it also felt like the last year that it can really operate at this scale. It kind of has to expand a bit further and it has expanded over the years in 2016 I think it was still just a couple of rooms in a hotel and now it's three main halls of the National Exhibition Centre and more besides. I went to some seminars, I went to some live performances, I went to see some podcasts being recorded and I have to say there was a huge variety of stuff on offer. I didn't really spend a great deal of time at any of the RPG events because I just kind of ran out of time to do stuff. I Spent a lot of time kind of just meeting people, a lot of friends I hadn't seen in many years and lots of different groups of friends that I haven't seen for a while that I just kind of got swept up in walking along and soaking up the atmosphere. And I think next time when I go, I will make a more concerted effort to seek out more stuff in the RPG sphere. It's just having not been for a while and being with a lot of friends who hadn't been ever before, it was really nice just to kind of just hang out and kind of play some games. We took... A lot of games with us into the expo and we played a lot in the open gaming which was also so busy that at one point I think I counted 50 people sat on the floor because there was absolutely no tables in any of the three giant halls there was to play games in. Um, and yeah just hang out and play games. We had an Airbnb not far from the venue where we could retreat every night. Um, it didn't actually have a table in it so it made playing games difficult but we improvised um, and kind of fashioned something. Uh, jury rigged a couple of coffee tables into something appropriate so yeah it was just nice to hang out and just see my friends and play games in an arena where it was kind of conducive for doing so and that leads me to the show now I mean I'll put this out there right now I think it went all right I think people enjoyed it um, but the big problem was, and the people who came to the show, like many of you might be watching this now, um, may well have not even noticed this, but uh, shortly before I went on and uh, was about to improvise an adventure on the spot, I was told by the tech support people that it wouldn't be recorded through the uh, PA setup they had. And... I'd spent about a week conversing with my contact at, uh, or trying to converse with my contact at Expo, because I was kind of worried about this and worried that this might happen. So I was kind of trying to put some safeguards in place that it wouldn't, and kind of was assured that I wouldn't need to bring any of my own recording equipment. I'd just need a laptop, and arriving for the quote unquote tech check beforehand. Uh, I realised that was a bad move. I really should have bought my backup stuff because they told me in no uncertain terms that the best I was going to get was recording it through the inbuilt mic in my MacBook, which, as we all know, is not ideal. And then kind of that taking it right up to the moment uh, in which people were let through the doors to come in and sit down. Uh, meant that I had to kind of try and keep a poker face on, on the whole affair to try and... Um, not stress out too much and kind of maybe actually put on a show for people that they'd kind of queued up to see outside. Um, so that happened. Now, having listened to it back, the recording through my built-in mic in my MacBook isn't actually that bad. And I think with a little bit of boosting and stuff, I'll 
be able to get it to be like a reasonable standard way worse than my normal audio but like it's possible and i think i'll happily kind of put it up um it was just a bit disappointing for that to happen like minutes before um i was about to go on and it probably could have been avoided but that's really my only gripe i was absolutely thrilled with the number of people who turned up i think we had a room for 30 and i think about 20 people came um and i'd been to a, a podcast the, the previous day and realized you only need about eight people to make it feel busy in there so when that amount of people turned up i was absolutely thrilled and um not all of them were just my friends which was a good thing it was a lot of strangers uh, a lot of you watching this might be in there sound off if you were in 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 the room because um thank you very much for coming to support me now the episode itself i kind of knew this would happen like i've talked before about how the show is made and I've talked before about how I like to spend time I like to walk away from things I like to try and figure out how to connect everything make it make sense thematically and narratively take time to enrich the characters um and I knew that that wouldn't be the case uh, in a live show and the problem with that is I kind of felt like the live show wouldn't be a fair reflection of the show itself and it was for that reason that before the show had been announced after i'd been accepted to actually do the show but before it had been kind of put live on the website and everything i was considering pulling out not because i was worried about doing the show i actually really enjoy that part of it but i was actually worried that whoever would come to see it or whoever come to listen to it would realize that it, it wasn't actually an accurate reflection of what the bad spot is all about and I think that, that actually held true. Like, the show that I made was fun, but it was, like, really goofy. Like, it, my kind of default role-playing mode is to kind of piss about and be a bit silly. Um, and it, I think it's because uh, I'm not a performer. Like, I'm not... I don't ever approach making the bad spot like an actor would. I always think of myself as approaching it from a writer's standpoint, and I think that shows like there's a lot of depth there that wouldn't be there um had i kind of taken a different uh, approach to things and that really comes across in this live episode because it's about 40 minutes of me just goofing off and i think it'll it'll go online um with with quite a lot of uh, caveats that this isn't <laughs> quite what the show is normally but that is not to say i didn't enjoy it i absolutely did love doing it um, and I, I was really stoked when I saw that many people come through the doors and I was really pleased to get the response that I got with um, a great big round of applause at the end before everyone was just rushed out of the door really quickly to bring in the next show, which which was a bit of a shame because it kind of felt like it would have been nice to hang out and talk to the people who'd come. But there was like another show starting literally a minute after mine ended and everyone was just kind of pushed out of the door. It was all just like a bit hectic and, you know, probably reflective of the fact of uh, of Expo being extraordinarily busy. For the rest of Expo, yeah, just like a ton of games, uh, like a lot of bargains as well, a lot of like shopping around for stuff that I'd been trying to get hold of for a long time. I've got a copy of Final Girl, which I'm really looking forward to playing. It's a solo board game that's kind of based on 80s slasher movies, which like looks amazing and has got some really nice things said about it. And I can't wait to give that a go. Um, and as far as demos went, we managed to get a demo of Star Wars Shatterpoint right at the end of um, the the third day, like the very last slot, the very last demo. And the guy doing it for us was like so hoarse, he could barely even speak because that is was the most popular game at Expo. Um, people wanting to try out that. And uh, we all went into it and we were like, we don't need another miniatures game to play. I've got too many miniatures games that like I just don't get on the table often enough. I don't need another one. And regrettably it's really good and now i really want to buy it and um i just can't quite justify it for now um but yeah it will be one that i kind of put in and out of my shopping basket every time i'm online i'm pretty sure um and also got to play uh blood on the clock tower which is uh, slowly becoming my favorite game ever of anything and trying to book on a game at expo was yeah an experience every single day sold out about five minutes after um doors opened and we managed to finally get there first thing on sunday morning to take the very last slots uh, i think six minutes past nine was sold out like hourly games all day running running across like two tables there must have been like a lot of people there trying to play blow in the clock tower and 
had a blast, had a blast, got to shout at some strangers and accuse them of betraying me when I was wrong all along. So yeah, that was UK Game Expo 2023. I've already chalked 2024 in, in my diary. Um, and I'm definitely going to go there again. Um, and do you think I should do the show again? I kind of would consider it, but maybe would consider doing something slightly different. Maybe a co-op game, maybe a different game. Who knows? So yeah, I might do it again. Maybe. Anyway, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, all that jazz. Find the Patreon. And I'll be back next week with, I think, second episode of season three. So you can stop having to enjoy me talking about stuff that isn't Starforged um, and get back into that next week. Okay, bye-bye.